Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Today we're going to be working on this big old Lincoln. So we showed in a video recently where we uh, kind of just got finally got the car out of the trailer and into the shop just to take a general look at it. And much like the 39 Coupe that we bought, this needs a ton of going through uh, just to make sure that everything is safe and it's going to not start on fire. So we, the goal with this video is to try and get this car to run and live again. So just Literally, if we can get it to, to just run, maybe move under its own power, even with a nurse tank, I'll be happy. Even if we put this thing away in storage in a trail or another building, uh, again, we want to be able to start it and move it under its own power because it is quite heavy and it gets a little old pushing this thing around. So that's my goal, kind of go through, undo some of the stuff and see if we can get it to run. I'm going to try and get it to run with all the crazy stuff that's done to the intake manifold to start and then we'll probably end up undoing that in maybe another video so we'll see what happens so let's get started all right so first thing we need to do here is get the engine disconnected from uh some of the unknown wiring that's done here so um i saw straight away that there is a battery cable there was two battery cables there's like a homemade i just took it off but if you look way down in there at the starter there's like a weird homemade or something, maybe it's not homemade, there's some kind of clamp, maybe it's like an industrial electrical th type thing, that there was uh, two battery cables hooked to, one was running to the trunk, I got it disconnected, the six volt stuff is still all here, so I'm gonna keep that for now, even though it's a little rough. And I got under the dash here and started pulling that wire that runs all the way to the back, and there was a radiator hose sitting here on the floor, which I just thought I'm gonna cover back up. So see what I saw. Uh, so, I see this heavy cable that is in here. It's a battery cable. I'm like, oh, there's a radiator hose. Oh, it's running through the radiator hose. So this is, uh, so it didn't arc on the floor. And basically that battery cable then goes to a clamp here with three or four smaller wires, which run all the way into the trunk. And I was trying to figure out where the heavy battery cable went for the 12 volt battery in the trunk. And basically those thin wires go to here. Turn my light. Those thin wires go to here to this clamp to the solenoid. So he was basically just bunching a bunch of wires together it was supposed to equal the same gauge thickness, I guess, in, in theory, as the existing as the battery cable and he didn't have a long enough heavy cable. So all of that's definitely the stuff we want to kind of delete or get rid of and try and do a little better, even though it obviously did work at some point. So I'm going to disconnect that, pull that battery cable out and get some of the uh, wiring here. You know, you can see I found, I don't know what this random spring was doing that's tied to a piece of twine um, that was hanging off of this wiring that goes at a horns, uh, solenoid, or I'm sorry, relay. So, yeah, so I can undo that. You can see everything has like, the the way the wiring was held together was with like bread twist ties and bits of wire. So I gotta kinda just go through all that and just de-loom the stuff like for this 12 volt alternator. Just get all that disconnected so we don't have any issues when I go to crank it.
All right, so I got pretty much all the major wiring disconnected uh, that could cause a problem. I left a little bit of the original wiring, but I disconnected, uh, pulled actually the original fuse box out that he had all kinds of stuff jumped on. So pretty much nothing should be attached in this thing. Um, I have a couple wires that he had loomed for the dual coil set up. I left those there. Those are the um, power wires for the coil. So hopefully once we get to that point, I can just use those wires and, and uh, connect them to a hot source and, and use that. But for now, what I want to see is, um, can we get this to crank over? Uh, he had a couple battery cables, like we talked about, attached to the um, starter. And I just have a little jumper. Uh, jump start pedal here to activate the solenoids. So, we're gonna touch this battery and see what happens. So I am using a 12 volt battery. I have everything disconnected, so I'll run a uh, ballast resistor to the ignition, not to fry anything, but uh, this way we can just see if it cranks it. See what happens. Okay, that's nothing. <laughs> Great. Hmm. Interesting. That's not a good start. Change the solenoid out. Try to try. There we go. Haha! -ha. Solenoid was bad. Okay, so got the engine cranking. Uh, I put a solenoid on this. I, I love these solenoids. I don't know if they still make them or not, but uh, this is a old style solenoid as I would call it, metal solenoid, um, but it actually has a jump start button on the bottom of it, which is really sweet. Uh, Mercury has one, a couple of my cars have them, so if you're trying to mess with a car or tune it or do whatever, um, even if the car is fully wired, you can just stick your hand right in here, push on the bottom on the little button, and we can crank the car up, which is great. So uh, now that we got this cranking, uh, I definitely want to check the oil level. I know it has some sort of oil in it, but it has, a float gauge on it for the oil level on these things. So I may just to be cautious, add a couple quarts of oil just to make sure that it has plenty of oil uh, before we crank the crap out of it. And I guess I'm gonna start trying to hook the ignition up and see if I can get any kind of spark. I highly, highly doubt it because the points are probably corroded. That's just from sitting like it has, it's almost definite that that would happen. But Got to try it, see what happens, but that's a big step. It cranks over, and uh, now we can try and get spark. And once we introduce spark, we know that we can add fuel, and this thing should fire, hopefully. So, we'll uh, take the next step.
All right, so I pulled the distributor off and his remote coil setup. Um, gentleman owned this, made a remote coil setup, which actually works pretty well. Uh, it worked on the uh, 39 as well. This one's a little more involved because it's a dual coil setup. The, the Zephyr was kind of like an internal, it had like a one piece coil, but it was kind of like an internal dual coil. So these are very easy to, uh, if you have that top plate, you can convert into dual coils. So that's what we did. Um, I filed the points a whole bunch and tried to be as thorough as possible. These distributors are a pain in the ass. Um, even on the, the, the early, the V8s of this era with the diver's helmet um, distributor is a pain in the ass. I think the Lincoln might even be more of a pain in the ass. There's a third bolt that is really hard to get to. I left it out for now. I just snugged the other two so it's tight because if I have to pull it off and sand the, uh, the points a little more, uh, I don't, it'll just make my life easier. So um, we will deal with that way. same thing with the coil cover gasket. So uh, I have my ballast resistor here um, set up. Uh, this is just like a GM style ballast resistor. He was using the original ballast resistors that were in on the, the um, on the fuse box, but since I just removed all that, this is just the one off for a run stand we know works. So what I usually do, I get the battery hooked back up. We just touch this to power. So this car is still positive ground. So you actually wire the coil and the distributor um, and the whole ignition system backwards to what you would think of if you're used to a modern car with a negative ground system. So your negative is actually your power uh, that goes to the uh, coil. So when I do this and you file them, I was getting no spark at all. I did it off camera and I just knew I needed to pull the distributor. I knew it was gonna happen. This thing's set out in the damp weather. So we're getting a little, that little spark is telling me that we, at least one of the set of points is getting, um, getting a charge. So, I guess I'm gonna check for spark next. Um, before I add fuel, I don't wanna like, sometimes I get ahead of myself and end up uh, flooding the engine because you're having other issues. So, I'm gonna check for spark. Got maybe one of the plug wires while we crank it over and if we got, if we got spark of the plugs then we know we're, we're really close. So, uh, one step closer, hopefully. That's Steve's, steel Steve's little spark tester. So, I'm working on a Sunday, and if Steve sees this, sorry, borrowing your tool. I'm too cheap to buy one. All right, so there's that. Um, got that connected. Got a little pedal here to crank it. All right, so we're going to power up the ignition, and then we'll crank it. And hopefully my little spark detector there will give me good news. Yes. All right. I saw a spark at this plug. I, I think it's good of a time to try and make it make noise as any. So. All right. I got to plug one vacuum leak. I got to hook the plug or hook up the uh, vacuum. Actually. I lie. Two vacuum leaks. There's one here for the that went to the wipers. So plug a couple vacuum leaks, then I'm gonna pour some fuel down its throat and see if we can make it make noise. See what happens. Knock the soup can off the back. It's a good sign. See if we can get it to pop and a little more. I may have to hook the nurse tank up to this sucker. Whoa! I'd call that a win. I think we're ready for a nurse tank. <laughs> I 
I feel like this is a requirement. It has to, the first couple starts have to be as sketchy as possible. I'm far too impatient to do anything otherwise. So, that seems all right. Now, I want to see if I'm getting fuel down the curb. Should be filling it up here. Oh, starting to get fuel. Come on, baby. There we go. Alright, so I forgot to turn the camera on, and this thing fired and ran like ridiculously quick. So, totally missed that shot. Fail. So, I'm going to try this again. See how easy it is. <laughs> I missed him. The great shot with me going, like, whoa! But hey, it runs. Incredible. soup can it fell off the first time all right so that was a ton of work um, in a very short time it was not labor intensive it was just tedious as heck uh, I ended up pulling out a ton of wiring out of this thing and plastic bags and inner tubes and yarn and twisty ties and all kinds of stuff that was used to um, improve upon on this car now i don't want to talk negative uh you know and rip the person that was doing this stuff and we said this in the 39 video too like he was using what he had he was you know kind of acting like he was still in the depression so it was kind of just whatever he had laying around he made it work and i gotta say for the craziness of how this all looked he was driving it with all this stuff that's kind of why i wanted to start it with this crazy intake riser setup you would probably look at this and say there's no way this thing would ever run with that it's, i mean it's literally like bits of pipe that he cut off and shoved in there and you could see these this pipe was past its prime when he used it because it's all pitted and crappy and somehow it works i was able to get it started uh really the majority of what i did was just kind of taking wiring and simplifying things to make sure that i didn't have any kind of uh electrical uh, meltdowns or anything like that and uh, of course all the extra fuel lines and, and crap in there um, the pile is pretty pretty impressive of all the stuff that I pulled out of this thing like I said wiring and whatever else um, in the end I just basically the biggest two things on why I wouldn't start in the beginning was the, the starter solenoid was banned and the uh, the points needed to be filed on most cars, points being filed would be very, very easy. These uh, early Fords with the diver's helmet um, distributors are very difficult. The Lincoln was a huge pain in the butt to get that distributor just out of there. Once it's out of there, it's still a little bit of a pain to get in and it has dual points to file both sets of points. But I was very thorough with it and I got it on the first try and it pretty much fired up and ran pretty easily. Now I tried to, sh I tried to film a quick little video of my phone to send every all my friends um and the thing was very very hard to start and i realized that uh so i tried it sounded like the the i was getting a lot of arcing in this in the spark uh off the spark plug wires but i couldn't really tell if it was that or it was because the valley 
is basically open. There's an intake gasket there, but it's kind of open. I don't know if it was just lifter noise I was hearing, but I tightened up all the spark plug wire clips, um, squeezed them tighter so they fit on the um, spark plugs better. It did start again, um, but not as easy as I would like. So it still needs some tweaking. I, this carburetor was set up for who knows what, so it might um, it might be you know not right either for this engine, but. Once I got it running, um, initially fired, then it would sit here and idle and purr, as you guys heard. And uh, the second time I ran it, the, the um, valve train really quieted up on it. We started getting oil flowing through the engine. Unfortunately, the oil pressure gauge on this is an electronic one, and I had disconnected all that stuff. So we'll, probably the next time we run this thing, um, we're gonna change, we're gonna fix the intake manifold situation. Put, I already voted it, or already got in stock a, a brand new intake manifold gasket for it. So we'll take all the extra pipe and stuff out of there, put the, mount the intake like stock, take the extra alternator off, put a, uh, the correct belt on there, and, uh, and hopefully get this thing set up a little more uh, normal, I guess you could say, and see if we can get it running and moving under its own power. So we may just the car's gonna need a full rewire, so probably um, we'll just temporarily wire something up with the ignition switch with some some wires and stuff, and uh, just get it so you could start it and shut it off in the car. Um, and maybe, may have to change these spark plug wires out, because it kind of sounded like they were arcing inside the spark plug tubes, but I wasn't sure. So, just all stuff we have to go through and look over, but it's awesome that this thing ran. Both of these cars, um, I think both of these cars, the engines were rebuilt. The 39 were, were pretty much 100% sure it was rebuilt because there's a sticker in the door jam. This one, we saw uh, a disassembled V12 engine, like old rings and pistons and all kinds of stuff. It makes me think that it might have been the stuff when you rebuilt this. So um, we'll probably do some compression tests and, all, and oil pressure and all that stuff the next time we run it just to kind of prove a little bit better. But... This is really awesome. My first V12 flathead and uh, got it running and it sounded as, even just starting to run it, it's like, it's just so smooth. It's really, really awesome. So that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think of the triumphant V12 first run video. Thanks guys, catch you later.